Hey, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the talk of my talk is uh, the expression of epitopes for lung skin disease virus on the code proteins of tobacco mosaic virus. And this was going to be expressed in Nicotiana Bendamiana, which is a cousin of tobacco. And we are from a country which has a lot of cattle. And I think one of the largest exports of the country is uh, cattle. And in the background there you see one of the local farmers standing in front of his cow which has lung skin disease. So the aim of the project was to develop a cost-effective vaccine that um, is efficient for lung skin disease and the vehicle for the production mechanism is using plants instead of the traditional tissue culture and eggs. And as well as develop the technology to be simple, inexpensive, quick, and adaptable as well as effective. So once we are able to produce a vaccine for lung skin disease, we want to be able to use that same technology to tackle other uh, diseases that are endemic in the area as well as the greater African region. Now, lung skin disease is a virus from the pox viridae family, uh, genus Capri, um, Capri pox virus. It is also a double-stranded virus. Uh, it is spread by biting insects, your mosquitoes and flies. And it's very similar uh, serologically to sheep and goat pox virus. Uh, the disease is endemic in Botswana, South Africa, and basically Africa in general. And over the last few years, lung skin disease virus has actually been spreading outside its natural um, zones. It's, you've had cases appearing in Asia and very few cases in Europe as well. It has a low mortality rate, but um, it has a very high morbidity. Symptoms which are associated with lung skin disease, uh, which presents itself after a two to five week incubation period, are fever, discharge uh, from the eyes, nose, and ears, uh, nodular and protected lesions, which are visible on the skin, uh, edema of the leaves, solid lymph nodes, and a very high abortion rate within um, pregnant cows. It has a really huge economic effect, uh, which are presented by the symptoms you get from the disease. Most of the cattle lose lots of weight. Uh, there's a reduction in uh, milk production. Um, cows are unable to breastfeed. Um, usually your calves uh, are the ones that suffer um, more, the highest levels of death. And because of that, um, you can't sell the meat. Hides are useless. Daily production is useless. And in most cases, um, in the severe cases, the cattle are rounded up, killed, instead of um, trying to be treated, if that is possible. Uh, a socio-economic study was done in Mpoko uh, a couple of years ago, where 12 villages were under the study. There were 2,900 cattle that were vaccinated with the currently available vaccine. And of those, 80 died from lung skin disease, and an estimated cost of um, 500,000 uh, rands in loss of revenue was estimated for the cattle. And for a subsistence farmer who has only three cows, um, that is a huge loss if they depend mainly on their cattle or a small subsistence um, for a living. Now, as I previously alluded to, um, vaccines are currently made in tissue culture or eggs. And this procedure is time consuming and takes about six months before you can actually produce a vaccine um, using the system. It's very expensive. Uh, the people who actually carry out the vaccine production have to be highly trained because there is huge, huge, huge um, potential for contamination. And all of that brings up the cost for vaccine production. As everyone knows, generally, to get a vaccine shot is expensive, uh, especially in Africa where the government doesn't subsidize most of your vaccine uh, shots. Um, it's also very labor intensive and also that also brings up the cost for vaccine production. So what we would like to do is move away from your traditional production in eggs and tissue culture and instead to the plants. 
the advantages of that is that in plants it's faster. Um, from the time uh, you actually start making your vaccine in the plant, it takes about 10 days for you to grow the vaccine in your plants to the time you can extract it and have it ready uh, for use. It is safer in that you are unlikely to get any pathogens that are harbored in plants that can actually affect animals and uh, mammals like us. It is less expensive. Um, you are using plants which are easy to grow and the extraction protocol for extracting TMD from plants is very cheap. Tobacco mosaic virus has also been shown to be very stable over long periods of time at room temperature, which cuts out your cold chain in terms of taking your vaccines to the people out there in the community. And you will not need refrigeration for that, which also brings down costs greatly. Um, since plants are eukaryotes in nature, there's also the ability to do post-translational modification of proteins, which is required for the proper folding of these proteins that um, is essential also in terms of eliciting, eliciting the proper immune response from the animals against, say, uh, antigens. And it's also been shown to work. Uh, a number of vaccines have been made uh, for using this technology, but I would like to highlight just two main ones. First was the non Hodgkin's lymphoma cancer, which was done by large scale biology a couple of years ago, I think around in 2010. And what they did is they were able to make patient specific vaccines um, for a trial of about 10 people. And it's nine out of the 10 people were actually cured of their cancer and it hasn't returned over that period of time. Um, also, more recently, ZMAP, which is an uh, antibody treatment against Ebola, which uh, I'm sure you all heard about Ebola last year and this year. The antibodies which were always alluded to as the new drug or the new cure for Ebola, which was uh, administered to two doctors. And in um, efficacy trials in Macaques, it showed 100% activity um, in curing Ebola. All of these were produced using plants and plant-based uh, vaccine technology. And you ask yourselves, how would we do this? We use tobacco mosaic virus as a vehicle to bring these antigens or disease antigens or epitopes of these antigens into the plants. Um, as I say, it's safe as it cannot infect animals, and it's easy to work with. Tobacco mosaic virus is the first virus to ever have been sequenced. A great deal is known about tobacco mosaic virus, and it's easy to manipulate. Uh, the plants can be grown in greenhouses and outdoors, and recently, because of the shift uh, of movement from tissue culture to plants, You've got a lot of development that has gone on and you can produce, uh, I think one of the large plants, as I'll show later on, produces or keeps about 4 million plants within a greenhouse in a building. So it's easily containable. It's safe to the environment and a large number of cold protein particles per virion are made. Now the technology we are going to use is attaching epitopes or antigens from the disease agent onto the code protein of a tobacco mosaic virus uh, particle. Now, if you have lots of code protein particles per virion, it means you are showing that uh, antigen a lot of times uh, in one virus, which helps in improving your antigenicity of, say, vaccine. And tobacco mosaic virus, once in the plant, has a really large biomass tobacco plants, which helps also in terms of reducing costs when it comes to production. Um, I'll try and go through in a simple way how we go about doing the co-protein fusions and what goes into it. The first thing would be to identify, of course, your disease uh, agent, in this case, lab skin disease virus, and important to lab skin disease virus is the P32 antigen, which has been shown to the major immunodominant region for the virus. Um, through sequences, 
uh, or sequencing the genetic material, you identify the sequence that's responsible for coding for the P32 antigen. You synthesize that, and um, once you synthesize that, you can then clone your sequence for the antigen into the genetic material of TMV in the area which codes for the coach protein. And once you're, you've done that, in your normal um, replication of the new virus, you can get the antigen being expressed on the surface of your tobacco mosaic virus. And that recombinant virus is then going to be used as the vaccine. To introduce the virus or the vaccine into plants, we have used a binary vector called P-Turbo, which combines both the TI plasmid of uh, agrobacterium and also contains the genome for tobacco mosaic virus. And once it gets into the plants, it is then able to um, express the genome for tobacco mosaic virus, which then spreads throughout the plants. And that process is called agro uh, infiltration. Other infiltration has been shown to be cheaper than what was previously used, where they would rub the RNA of tobacco mosaic virus onto the leaves of plants. But it was shown that, um, or it is known that, um, reverse transcription or transcription to get that RNA is very expensive. So to cut out that expense of getting uh, your transcription kits and so on, we've resorted to using agro infiltration, and that works really fast and really well. As a proof of concept, um, we used GFP as a marker, and we infiltrated plants. Um, on your left, you will see plants that are seen uh, under normal light, and on your right, the same plant seen under UV light. Um, two days post infiltration with uh, agrobacterium, you will see that the infiltrated leaf has already started expressing your green fluorescent protein. Four days post infiltration, it's spreading throughout the plant and it's gone systemic. By the time you get to six days, the whole plant is uh, essentially saturated with uh, GFP, which just shows the, the amount of virus being made within the plant, as well as how fast it spreads and how quickly you can get a large amount of a uh, virus, which can be used as a vaccine. And as I said, with the move to um, the use of plants, the scale-up has been shown to be very easy. These are facilities that are shown by iBio, and this is the vacuum infiltration method that they're using to infiltrate a huge bunch of plants. And Caliber, which has LED lights, those um, towers go up to, I think, two stories of plants, and they can keep uh, four million plants growing at a time. So, um, iBio and, and Caliber were given a challenge by DARPA, which is the Defense Administ Advanced Research Project Agency in the US, to produce influenza vaccine uh, within a certain period of time, I think it was um, 28 days for a certain number of doses, they managed to meet that challenge um, from one plant um, to produce those vaccines. So it's easily scalable and it works really fast. Now, as an overview of the actual project, um, like I said, the first thing would be to design epitopes and synthesize those which will be used um, for the vaccine. You fuse those epitopes to the core protein of tobacco mosaic virus. You aggregate from trade plants. You extract the virus from the plants. Uh, you carry out some protein analysis to see if you've actually got TMV and if your epitopes are being expressed at the same time. You do small animal trials to see if your recombinant virus is antigenic and does elicit uh, an immune response. And the final thing would be to carry out clinical trials of cattle to see if it does actually elicit immunity within those cattle. So when it came to epitope design, we used the Hopwood scale, and it's a hydropathic plot which shows the hydrophobicity and uh, hydrophilicity of different parts of the protein. And you'd see that um, 
you want to target hydrophilic regions as those are the ones that are, express, are, show, are usually on the outside of proteins and exposed to um, anything and those are the ones that usually carry your antigens. Um, we had a whole, I think, um, I had 56 different epitopes which I designed from the P32. Here I'm just showing some of the longer ones which I used just to cover the whole um, protein. And because the longer the epitope you have, the higher you are, uh, the higher the chances are to get an antigenic reaction uh, to that epitope. So we had a host of short ones and some long ones, and I'll explain that in this slide. Now, with the short ones, or in the cloning method, there's two methods in, of introducing those epitopes to the core protein of tobacco mosaic virus. Initially, we're restricted to 24 amino acids as these were cloned directly to the code protein. Anything larger than 24 amino acids inhibited the folding of the code protein and hence you would not get uh, your viral particles uh, made. So we had those and this just shows um, your epitopes being fused in the three uh, PCR steps to the code protein. The second one, um, someone had come up with a method of attaching a linker to the code protein and this linker thus allows your epitope to hang on the side of the code protein and thus there is less um, hindrance to the folding of your tobacco mosaic code protein and um, we have managed to attach uh, amino acids as large as 64 amino acids to that and hopefully that gives a better immune response. Um, after we've attached the epitopes to the core protein, we infiltrated plants, and there's a bunch of infiltrated plants there. You can, if you could see here, you'd see the scrunching up of the leaves, which are typical signs of tobacco mosaic virus uh, infection. And we extracted the tobacco mosaic virus, which is the recombinant one, and the graph here shows the yield per gram of fresh weight. Um, I won't show the ones which I'm carrying on with in terms of uh, making the actual vaccine and there's a difference in the amount of um, virus you can extract from each plant because it has also shown that um, the isolated points of the epistopes play a major role in the amount of vaccine or virus you can finally extract from the plants. After we extracted and purified the plants, uh, carried out um, SDS page just to show that we've got the right thing. Tobacco mosaic virus, the wild type, runs at about 17 amino acids, um, 17 kilodaltons in size, and these are two epitopes of the short epitopes that we run, and there's not much difference in terms of the weight they add. And the longer epitopes um, run at about 27 kilodaltons in size. Um, that is the lung skin disease virus code for, um, positive control, which is the whole lung skin disease virus. On the right, we have a western blot where we probed with um, antibodies against tobacco mosaic virus, and you can pick up tobacco mosaic virus for the positive control as well as the recombinant um, virus extracted that's carried in the different epitopes. And at the bottom, you've got um, a western blot where we probed with um, polyclonal anti-LSDV uh, antigens. And we are still able to pick up both um, the wild type, uh, lumpy skin disease, as well as what we've uh, generated in the recombinant. Um, disease, or recombinant TMV, which we are going to use as the vaccine. After we had confirmed that we've got our recombinant um, TMV carrying the epitopes, we then carried out small animal trials in guinea pigs, where five guinea pigs were injected um, with our recombinant uh, TMV, and we used uh, ammonium hydroxide as an adjuvant, boosted after 14 days, and uh, blood was collected from these guinea pigs and antibody titer was determined by ELISA. Um, from the antibody titer, we also got... Okay, 
Sorry, it's not Kelvin's fault. It was indicated as 30 minutes in the program, but it's actually also 15 minutes. No. Okay. So, um, once we got the antibody data, we were able to see that antibodies against um, lumpy skin disease were produced in the different constructs we made, and unsurprisingly, the long epitopes, which is L14 and L17, also had a really high antibody titer, although it is lower than the current vaccine that is used for lumpy skin disease. Um, this is was used to confirm, um, the Western blots were used to confirm that the antibodies we got did in fact um, recognize both lumpy skin disease and TMV, and this is the Western blots we carried out for the different epitopes we used. And for future work, we are planning on working on a larger epitope, currently one which is 140 amino acids, and we should be testing that very soon. We are also planning on moving from the traditional injecting each plant individually to using vacuum infiltration if that's faster and more efficient. And we'll also need to carry out a plaque reduction neutralization assay to actually find out the, uh, the level of neutralizing antibodies we produce using our vaccine as well as going to cattle trials. Uh, I'd like to thank the University of Botswana, as this is where the, kind of the study is being carried out. Uh, Pizza College, which is a college in the California where whom, with whom we partner with, and they are the ones who provided the plasmids and the technology we're using. Botswana Vaccine Institute, which helps with the animal trials, as well as Botswana, which um, helped with a lot of the funding for this project. Thank you very much. Thank you.